Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. <laughs> You're here nice and early this morning. How love you to be here. We are going to uh, be talking about a fabulous topic today, how to be courageously, authentically you. Um, and um, for those who don't know me, Sally, I'm Sally Thibault, uh, professional speaker and counsellor, life coach, author and EFT trainer. And um, I am so excited to be able to bring you this topic today um, because, do you know, every week when I am creating um, topics for you guys, um, so, amazingly, this is what happens. I'll tell you what happens. I don't know on a Monday <laughs> what we're going to be talking about. I have no idea. And then by Tuesday morning, I usually have a topic. And then I spent, good morning, Donna. Oh, ooh, fabulous. Oh, good, Donna. Oh, great. Look, I really hope that I am covering some of this. You, and I'd love you to let me know. Morning, Louise. Lovely to have you here. Um, uh, what, here's what happened. So whenever I come up with these topics and that come up on Tuesday, and then I begin two days of research. So I spend about two days kind of really getting into, okay, what is it about this particular topic that I want to share with you guys? Um, one of my sole purpose is to teach, inspire, and entertain. So um, I'm, I'm looking at topics that I can teach. Um, so I'm constantly looking at not just kind of a, a topic for topic's sake, I'm looking for ways that I can teach uh, to you so you come away from each of these episodes with real tangible um, ways that you can implement this into your life. But what real, what happens to me in the process is really extraordinary because in this particular topic today, and it's happened on a few of the other topics that I've talked about, but this one in particular, was that I begin to ask myself, morning, Michelle, I begin to ask myself this, where in my life am I doing this or not doing this? And so when I the, the topic began authentic, how do you be your authentic self? And it came about from um, so a lot of Brene Brown's work where she talks about uh, living authentically as and it's a practice. Being authentic is a practice. You know, we tend to talk about it as a noun. They are authentic. He's authentic. I'm authentic. But it's not. It's a practice that sometimes you have to work at every day. So when I was starting to do this research on this topic, I began to look at, okay, where in my life am I not being authentic? And what really came up for me um, was um, you need courage to be authentic. This is about having courage to step into your authenticness of who you are um, because it's a conscious choice of how we are going to live every single day. And the world we live in is not about you being your authentic self. The world we live in, and this came up within a coaching session with a client yesterday, in a particular institution that she's in or industry that she's in, where to be, to say what you want, to speak your truth is not encouraged because we want everybody to follow the same criteria. Now, this is happening more and more. Social media, the expectations of how we're supposed to look and act. So it becomes a way that we have to, act to fit in and our authenticness the who we are and I'm going to share with you the three fears that I actually came to me in the middle of the night the three major fears we have about living our authentic self you need courage and every day it's checking in on that courage. And I found this quote yesterday that I wanted to just share with you this morning by author E.E. E. Cummings. And he says, to be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you everybody but yourself means to fight the hardest battle which a human being can fight and never stop fighting is staying real, is one of the most courageous battles we ever 
fight. Yeah. Courage is my word. A is for authentic. Absolutely. Now I'm going to make a little meme of that particular quote and put it up in our Tapping to Reclaim You group um, later today because it's one of those quotes when I read it, I went, oh, yes. In a world that is doing its best night and day to make you everybody but yourself, how we're supposed to look. I saw this quote the other day that talked about women should be dressing their age. <laughs> I thought, what's that? <laughs> what's dressing your age? I have no idea what that is. Who knows? Um, dressing your age. You know, it just kind of, that's the world we live in where we face this kind of criticism. You know, before you put anything up on social media, you know, that little background noise that goes, you know, ooh, you know, people can like this or is this the best part of me or I'm showing me in my best rather than showing me as authentically me. Mm. So we're going to talk today about the three fears and then at the end, of course, we're going to do a really powerful tapping um, session um, on this to help you on your path to living courageously, authentically. Um, and one of the things we talked about last week was this need for validation. And there's a sentence that has keep coming up this week for me, um, which was, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to be brilliant and talented and successful? And who do you think you are to be doing that? And who do you think you are to be thinking that? You know, that's a, a strong feeling that many of us have to overcome and that's when the imposter syndrome will step up like who do you think you are so this morning we're going to be talking about the three biggest fears to come up over that in order to courageously be authentic and as I mentioned before this is something you have to do every single day this is not about living authentically this is about being your authentic self every day. And you know when you're out of authenticity. You know when you're not being yourself. You know, you, you know that part. You know, you know when you don't speak up in a meeting when somebody is, they're talking about stuff and you go, I don't get what the heck they're talking about. You're all very excited about this, but I don't get it. We sort of sit back and I don't want to appear dumb or I don't want to appear that I don't know what they're talking about. Or you see somebody speaking to somebody inappropriately and you don't call it, um, you know, toxic words, uh, you know how much they hurt. And if, if you see somebody and you're not calling it, that's because of fear of what will they think about me if I do. That can be enough to kind of hold this back. So let's look at the three biggest fears. And I'd love you to let me, you, me know um, with these fears as they come up, if something resonates with you. Um, the first one is fear of rejection. Uh, and this comes back, I believe, from when we were kids, where we were trying to figure out what we needed to do to be loved. Now, when we're born, right, we have no problem <laughs> asking for what we want. You know, if we're hungry, we'll cry. Um, if if, uh, if, if uh, we need our diaper and nappy needs to be changed, we'll cry. If we want to get something and reach something, we'll keep going and reaching for it, even though somebody might, you know, pick you up and physically remove you from that whatever it is you're trying to get. You'll still keep going. You, you don't. That's you want that. You you know what you want when you're a child. And then as you grow up, you start hearing words such as, um, "Don't be greedy." Uh, you can't always, I'll write them all down. Don't be greedy. Think of others before yourself. Just because you want it doesn't mean you can have it. And, of course, the doozy is who do you think you are. You can't always get what you want. And so <laughs> we begin to create in this, this, okay, well, what do I need to do to have this love? What do I need to do to have this acceptance? Because if I if I go for what I want, maybe I'm being greedy and then well, they'll be rejecting you know, as teenagers, a big thing about fitting in. And if the teenagers, you know, once they get to kind of that 13, 14, 15, they stop listening to you as parents. 
It's all about fitting in so they won't be rejected. So in order for me to be accepted, what cloak do I need to put on? For many of us, we're chameleons. You know, we adapt to our surroundings in order to be accepted. In our relationships, where are we um, letting barriers down, letting our values go in order to be accepted in a relationship? And when the, when this comes up at the very core, um, the issue becomes, who am I? Because if, it, if it's, the, it's, it's the essence of me, and we talk about purpose a lot, you know, your soul purpose, if the soul of me is not loved for who I am, then the pain of rejection is too great. So we'll mask it. We'll become somebody else in order to not feel that fear of rejection. And when it comes to doing your soul's purpose, and that's what, you know, that's my thing at the, right now because I just truly believe that's what I'm here to do is to help you find your purpose, is if, if the essence of that, of who I am, is not accepted, then the pain of it, the pain of that rejection is too great. It's too great. So we do something else rather than feel the pain of the rejection. We'll, we'll, we'll mask it. We'll numb it. We'll eat too much, drink too much. We'll, we'll take on roles that don't have us. We don't have to step up and show how true selves because what if I'm rejected and that would the pain of that. So I'm just going to be normal. I'm just going to be ordinary. I'm just going to fly under that radar because the pain of rejection is too great. Um, number two, fear of criticism. So number one, fear about living authentically yourself is rejection. Number two is criticism because it goes to the very core of who you are. It's like if I, if I step up and speak my truth, if I step up and, and uh, share what I truly believe is me in my deepest, most incredible vulnerability, and you criticize me, the pain of that criticism, and I've shared this story before about um, John Gray, men from Mars, women from Venus, many, many, many years ago, it'd have to be 20 years ago, when he was interviewed um, by Oprah Winfrey and asked why he took, it took so long for him to have that book published. He had worked on, he'd, he'd created that work, done that research. And he said, because I knew this was my life's work and if it was criticised or rejected, the pain of that would have been too great. What would I have come back from? And so we, instead of stepping into authentic selves, we're, we're constantly looking, well, I don't want to be, I don't want this fear of criticism. Now, there's a twofold process to this because you need feedback. You, you know, you need you need to have somebody in your life who'll call you on your bullshit, really. And you need the person who who you have in your life that you can trust in your life to call you on that has to have you at their heart, not another agenda. And many times we listen to the criticism of others and they haven't earned the right, number one, to um, to, to, to be there because they're running another agenda. Now, for instance, in my life, it's my husband, Jerry. He, he will call me on it big time. And and when he does, I don't like it. I was like, you know, like I don't, and I go, mm, gee, I love this. <laughs> in fact, he's got to be very careful sometimes <laughs> when he says it. But I know in my heart that he knows me well enough to know when I'm in, in that self-imposter sage, when I'm falling into fear, when I am not living my authentic self, he can call me on it lived with me for 38, nine years, so he gets it. And I also know that he's worked on himself long enough to be able to give me that feedback. I don't always like it. I don't always take it. I'm like, and it can be a blah for a while before I go away and go, okay. <laughs> and get it right. So that's feedback, and that's good feedback. But when it's criticism, when somebody else has another agenda about criticizing you, when they're running their own pain or their own hurt, be very careful about what they say. And we can do everything to avoid criticism. 
you know, procrastination comes up big time. You avoid that criticism. If I'm not doing it, I'm not being criticized by it. Let me know if any of this is resonating with you, if it's if it's any things coming up for you this morning. And the third one, so we had fear of rejection. I just actually want to go back to that fear of rejection again. The fear of rejection is something I just re- remembered. You know, Jack Canfield says rejection's a myth. And he's talking about that when he's talking about rejection in sales. So if you're in a role of selling of some particular, whether it's selling you, whether it's selling your product, whether you're selling your service, the fear of rejection is a myth because you didn't have it before the sale and then you didn't have it after. So they're not rejecting you. If you've got a product or service and you are promoting it or selling it and somebody says no, it's usually, no, it's not right for me right now. They're not rejecting you. It's just not right for them right now. But we thought, we get all caught up in this fear of rejection. And it stops us building our business, moving ahead in life, this fear of rejection. So be very careful that when you are in a business and you are, you know, you want to get a business up and running or you, you know, you want to raise funds or you, or, or, or you're, you're going for a job, you know, a, a, a promotion in, in your life, but when it's turned down and you don't get it, that it's not rejection of you. That's because and check, is this is this coming up for me? My fear of rejection. And number three is fear of confrontation. Now, I grew up in a very noisy, loud Catholic family. Four girls, one boy who spent his life playing sport just to get out. <laughs> get out of the house and away from his sisters and we're all very close in age and three of us shared a bedroom so the way we dealt with confrontation in our house was very loud very loud usually involved throwing something slamming something walking off somewhere and that was how we dealt with confrontation now as I grew older of course and dealing with places of confrontation at work, you can't slam doors and yell at people and you have to learn to, to be able to stand in confrontation. But what happens is confrontation, when you have when there's been fear of it as you're a child, you may you may have had a dad who yelled at you or a mum who yelled at you, or a, you know, you might have been a timid kid and you had an older brother who yelled and that fear would come up for you. So you're placing the fear of confrontation, this fear of confrontation that you go into the flight, fight and freeze response. So how does that look in confrontation? When you, you know, I'm going to have to confront somebody about this or I'm going to have to stand up for myself or whatever. The fear of confrontation shows up this way. You go and flight, fight and freeze. So flight is you want to run. Okay, I'm getting out of here. You just take off. I'm not going to, I can't deal with this. I'm out of here. I can't deal with this. Uh, fight is when you're going to stand and you're going to argue. And what happens <laughs> when you go into that high flight, fight and freeze response is, as you know, um, the cortisol cortisol rises and you can't think. So you say things. How many times have you said things? And you go back and go, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. Because you go straight into emotional response your ability to think clearly is gone because this fear of confrontation has come up for you. So you, you're going to react in one of three ways. So flight, you're going to run. I'm, gonna, I'm out of here. I can't deal with this. Fight, and you start to argue and then you say things you wish you hadn't said. Oh, my God, you feel so bad. You go into shame afterwards. Oh, my God, I wish I hadn't said that. Now I've got to apologize to them. So, you know, that fear is, oh, if I, if I get into confrontation, I say things I shouldn't say. And the one is you freeze. Have you ever gone to this? Damn, I wish I'd said, <laughs> you know, like five minutes, 10 minutes later. Damn it. I wish I'd said this because you're going to freeze. You can't think straight. So that fear of confrontation. So if you're in a situation where you can't be your authentic self and that in order to step up into your authenticity, you may have to confront somebody or something. The memory of that I'm not good in confrontation. I'm going to do one of three things and I'll feel bad about it after is enough to go, whoop, I'm not going to do this. 
hundred percent. Yes, Donna. Yeah, I'm not going to do this. Mm -mm -mm. Fear. Oh, uh, no, I'll keep everything to myself. That's when I'm going back to authenticity. Absolutely, Sue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Authenticity is a daily practice. A daily practice. It's like every day you have to, number one, gear yourself up the beginning of the day. So those are all the habits that I talk about all the time, the first 20 minutes of your day, meditation, journaling, exercising, whatever that is. You've got to set your mind and your intentions ready for the day. And at the end of the day is to ask yourself the question, have I been my authentic self today? And where, this is self-actualization, self-awareness, where was I not? And that's where, you know, to me, living your purpose, talk about soul purpose all the time. When you're living your soul purpose, it can be so scary. Yeah, Sandy, daily practice. The soul, because... Here's the, here's the issue. The sole purpose is what you came here to do. Your purpose in life is to live your sole purpose, whatever it is. And your life purpose is to figure out how to bring that sole purpose to benefit others. I truly believe that our gift to the world is to share our gift to the world. That's, I, I, I absolutely believe that 100%. And that so much of what's going wrong in the world at the moment is that we've lost this ability to understand our sole purpose. We don't know how to do it. We go into fear. You know, there's this, you know, I've seen this thing that happened on during the week and there was these kids, this gang that's doing all these burnouts on roundabouts. Gang, this gang of kids. They're wanting to fit in. They've lost who they are. It, you know, you can see, I can see the pain. The pain in these kids is because they're trying to figure out where they fit. Where do I fit in this world? What is it I bring to this world? The system, and I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent at the moment, the system isn't set up for you to explore and embellish your gifts. The system, I'm going to talk the education system, the system is set up for you to stay in the system. <laughs> you know, I worked in education for 10 years, okay? I worked in education for 10 years. I can see this. It, it's about results, okay? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, you know, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Do something that makes your mother proud. Oh, for crying out loud. You, you know, your mother will be proud because you're just you. Just it. That's it. That's what your mother... But, you know, make your mother proud or do what you... I, um. We're constantly looking for this um, acceptance, acknowledgement, um, fitting in, who's our tribe, and the bottom of all of that is love, love and acceptance for who we are. That's it. I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> oh, I get so passionate about it, you know. Um, the That's our role. Our role is to be expressing who we are. That's it. We don't have to be anything else, but we've somehow we've fallen into this thing that we have to be a something to be loved and accepted and loved and accepted. And fear of rejection, fear of criticism, fear of confrontation are the things that hold us back from being authentically you. When somebody asks you for your opinion about something, do you give them honest feedback? Or are you trying to make them feel better? I want to be that friend to people, to my friends, and I want to be that coach to people that tells the truth about what you, when you're asking me my opinion. I don't want to make you feel good. I, I, I did that for a long time. What if you feel like you're not good enough? Yeah, Sue. Exactly. Right there. Not good enough. That's, that's you know, who am I? Who do I think I am? That's a, that's a huge pull, that worth, you know. Like for me, in a lot of, I've done a lot of tapping around this. There was a, a moment in my life I always wanted to teach and, and inspire. That's always been my, that they're my, that's, my soul, that's my soul purpose words, teach and inspire. 
And I ought that I, my whole life, it's all I wanted to do was teach and inspire, teach and, and entertain came in a little bit later on. Teach and inspire, teach and inspire, you know, inspire people to be the best. I love that. I love that. And that's what I saw teaching as doing that, inspiring people to, to live their best. I didn't know it when I was 17. I just knew I wanted to teach. I knew. Yeah, Donna. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put that up in a minute too. Um, because um, I, I, um, that's all I wanted to do is teach. I wanted to teach. And so when I was in my last year of school and we had the school counsellor come in and, you know, what do you want to do with your life? And I didn't have the marks. And she said to me, you need to face this, Sally. You're not smart enough to teach. Now, I remember that day, I, rem- I remember her name, her name was Mrs. Ryan. I remember she had a red suit on. You know, funny, those moments in your life, remember? Red, she used to wear this, actually quite nice suit. She was a big woman, but she wore wool suits. It was in Melbourne, wintertime. Grey hair. And she said, you have to realise, Sally, you're not intelligent enough to be a teacher. What an awful thing to say to kid number one. And secondly, didn't I prove her wrong? <laughs> but at that moment, I thought, oh, my God, that's Wow, that criticism of my sole purpose, right? And I remember that moment. So, what am I going to do with my life now? What, what? So, I wasn't intelligent enough to do the subjects because you didn't teach me properly. I'm a kinesthetic learner. You didn't figure that out. It was your fault, not mine. And the fact that I was not doing well in school was not my problem. So, I get really annoyed. It's your problem as a teacher. You weren't teaching me properly, but she made it my problem. And so that was too painful. So for years, you know, what I went and did, my mother, bless her heart, she tried me to get to go back to school again in year 12 because I failed, but I didn't because, oh, what was I going to do, go back and fail again? Well, that hurt too much. So I took a, she got me into secretarial, you know, t- typing. Well, thank goodness I got it now, you know, touch typing, which I don't know, understand why they don't teach in school. But anyway, touch typing and shorthand, which I was terrible at. <laughs> terrible um and then I worked in an office for oh, you know until I was 24 until I started you know fell into teaching fitness but wow you know when I look back on that ages between 17 from that moment she told me that to 24 I I I rebelled I did some pretty you know I was out there and I drank a lot um you know those days you couldn't afford to drink a lot but you know beer blech, but I drank a lot of party that stayed out you know started to hang around with boys because that was easier um but I realized that that whole thing that whole thing was about her criticizing my sole purpose and telling me I wasn't intelligent enough I wasn't good enough I wasn't worthy enough to do what I want to do but the thing is this we find our path you know, I, I taught fitness for 15 years. I, I had a TV show. Um, I, you know, stood in front of 2,000 people in a pair of leotards <laughs> teaching aerobics. My bum on the front page of the Edmonton Journal. I found a way eventually to discover my soul's purpose, not in that environment, that education environment, but and now, you know, I'm doing what I love. So for you, for you, the question to ask is this. I hear what is it you want? I'm going. To, I'm going to just pop these up for a minute because I want to answer this first of all. But I'm off my soapbox now. So I want to talk about what Donna it says. I think because people are often asking for advice because they want to hear what they want to hear. Yes, yes, Donna. They're exactly. They want you to um, acknowledge that you agree with them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Let's have a look. What Sandy? What you said. Um, my role is to speak for others. I always say, hear the words and then help them process. That's my truth. Yep. Yes. So if it's not happening for you, Sandy, if it's not being your, you're not stepping up, is to ask where you are not speaking for yourself. You see, because this is, it's got to be balanced giving and receiving, remember. Okay, it's got to be balanced giving and receiving. So where you are, um, sorry, this is just not coming up. Something's going on here. Where you're not being yourself. Now, look, I'm, I'm going to show this again. For those of you who can make the event on the 30th of June, this is exactly what we're going to be doing. Two whole days, 
two whole days we're going to spend getting you really aligned with your soul purpose and i'm really passionate about this because you know what the world needs you for goodness sake that's what we came here to do you know whatever it is it's just yeah because it's got to be balanced you know when and especially those people who have soul purpose that's helping mine isn't helping that's not my words my words teach and inspire but helping others and or serving others is to you you have to make sure that it's evenly balanced that you are also feel worthy to be served or worthy to be helped so make sure it's not you're all the giving because that's when you lose energy the thing about soul's purpose is this it continually regenerates you it continually re-energizes you you don't run out of it when you're living it you you have the energy it's when you are not living it that you run out of the energy it's when you get tired and you fall into self in the posture and situation who am i who am i but when you are totally in that soul purpose you are you you know it it's in you it's in your heart it's in your gut you know, I now know my sole purpose, and it's always been some funny, as we mentioned on last week's, so, you know, I can see the patterns. It's like it's always been there. <laughs> I just wasn't listening. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I've been hit around the head so many times. Good grief. Ah, I, you know, 60 and I get it. Oh, jeepers. <laughs> Slow learners. Great Marianne Williamson quote I heard, I think I mentioned last week, you know, she said, some people learn through joy, some people learn through pain. I haven't yet learned to, <laughs> to learn through joy. No, I've only learned through pain. Oh, right, I want to learn from joy from now on. In. All right, how are we all? We're all still on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when your role is to speak for others, Sandy, make sure you're speaking for yourself. You know, that's part of being authentic. Um, you know, for myself, it, teaching Inspire, I have to look where I'm teachable too, you know. Like I read a lot and I li like I just all the time I'm listening to podcasts, I'm reading, I'm researching. I'm I have to learn too because that's the balance of it, right? I can't teach and inspire unless I'm being inspired by education, listening to others, being taught by others. So, you know, I'm always asking myself, am I teachable? Am I learning new things in order to to grow and evolve? So you've got to have the balance, the yin and the yang, right? All right, how are we? Where are we? Oh, gosh, we're over time. We're over time. I want to do an, a tapping, though, with you. How are we going? Let me know if you're still here. Just give me a heart or a hello or a come on or an aha. I want to do um, a, um, a tapping. I'm looking at my notes, make sure I've got everything. Uh, you know what? Uh, I've been researching all of this, and then this morning at 5 a.m., this came to me. I, it's not. They're not my notes. <laughs> I did last night. They're all old set that I did wrote at five o'clock this morning. I want to make sure I get all. It was like, oh my god, I got it. Oh my goodness, I got it. Being authentic. Oh my god, can you imagine? Let me ask you this question: the difference it would make in the world if everybody lived their purpose. If they were not living in fear of rejection or criticism. Or confrontation if they felt totally 100% confident in their authentic or being authentic what difference would it make in the world yeah balance is learning to say no to absolutely sue absolutely and that's up for many women um, actually that was my notes from last night um, that yeah the ability to say no and no as a complete sentence no nope. would you like to come here no Thank you. Don't, no justification. No, no, thank you. I don't. I don't want to. Um, that no. That's. Would you take on more responsibility? No. Thank you. <laughs> don't, need to, don't need to justify. No, it's a complete sense. Good point. Good point. Thanks for putting that up, Sue. All right, let's tap. And I want to tap on. I'm going to tap on a big one. What I think for many of us is fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. So I want you to measure um, on a scale of 1 to 10 how strong is your fear of rejection. Write that down. Um, and I want you to think of a moment when you felt the pain of rejection. So that could be adding no justification. Yes, 
That's right, Michelle. Not adding justification to the no is the hardest. That's right. No, mm -mm. I don't need to justify it to you. And a good friend will go, oh, okay, fine. I mean, just say, oh, no, thank you. You know, maybe you don't have something else on. You just don't want to go. <laughs> I think you would rather have my slippers on and my big fluffy sweater and my dressing gown and sit in front of the TV and watch Netflix and have a glass of wine. No, no, no. <laughs> thank you, Sue. Yeah, I, it was a big one for me to learn. No, complete sentence. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. Complete sentence. Thank you. Thank you for asking, but no. Okay, uh, free rejection. Here we go. Let's tap on this, okay? Huge for women, I think. Well, for everybody, but I think for us as women, fear of rejection, you know, not being a nice girl, not being accepted into the group. If I say, if I if I just say, no, I don't want to do this. Oh, I just had another one. Yeah. Um, fear of rejection, not being part of the group. Um, if I say no to this, um, they won't like me. So just check. I go back to a teenage thing, could go back for your mum and dad. You know, if I if I don't do the course they want me to do at school, are they going to love me? Are they going to be proud of me? You know. Isn't it interesting because we tend to these days say to our kids, Dunny, just do what makes you happy. But we, like many of us grew up in that area where it wasn't. Interesting enough, just to sideline before we go, I met my daughter saying to me once, I, I was doing everything to make you proud. <laughs> And I said to her, yeah, rejection is being bullied. Oh, interesting, Michelle. That's come up for you. That's really interesting. Um, the fear of being bullied could be rejection. My daughter, and I said, darling, I'm proud of you anyway. <laughs> she, she said, I just had this feeling that I had to do something, make you proud. Wow, great conversation. But anyway, interesting how our kids do that. Fear of rejection, where it is, where you felt rejected. Oh. Oh, Michelle. Uh, Melissa, great. Lovely to have you here, Melissa. Mine started from being adopted, but also finding out I was going to be adopted out before I was born. Wow. Ooh, that's powerful. Ooh, that's really powerful. Yeah. So much of what we do is um, stuff that we, um, hmm, before we came into physical form. Interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff. Melissa. All right. Okay. Let's step on fear of rejection. Just see if you can find us an incident in your life where you were rejected and it hurt. Or maybe it's just happened recently. You know, maybe you, you've got a product you, you, you're you promoting or want to sell or you ask somebody to join your team and they said no and you felt really rejected. Just go to that pain, what that felt like. Okay. Where you feel it. Here we go. We're way over time today. All right. Here we go. Even though that moment I felt rejected. It was so painful. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I remember that time I was rejected. I wanted to do something and they rejected me. And it was so painful. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though right now I'll do anything to avoid the pain of rejection. Because I remember how it hurt. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Okay, that pain, that pain of rejection, I avoid it at all costs. I remember how painful it felt. When I think about it now, I can still feel it. I realize now I'll do anything to avoid rejection. That pain of rejection. Feeling rejected. Feeling rejected. This pain of rejection. I don't like that feeling of rejection. 
brings back too many memories of pain. Feeling rejected, that pain of rejection. I know I do it now. Don't speak my truth to avoid being rejected. Okay, take a big breath and let it go. Okay, now remember this is a general tapping, but if it's brought some stuff up for you, you need to keep tapping, okay, to get this down. If, it's, if you remember the pain, keep tapping on it. Keep tapping on it. And if it's really triggered something, just let me know. Reach out to me. Um, so now, okay, the thing about rejection is, it's not just a one-off incident because when you start to go back through the patterns, the incidences, you'll find where it started. And as Melissa said for her, it was before she was born, okay, that pain rejection. So you might have to go quite deep, you know. Times your friends were rejected you because you, you know, didn't have the right shoes on or something or, you know, the time that, that, that you, um, they all wanted to go somewhere but they knew you were a goody two-shoes and you'd never go, which was in my story apparently. I found out when I was at my 30th school reunion. They never asked me anyway because I was a goody two-shoes. Anyway, a whole other story. So see if you can find where that pain of rejection is and that's what you need. You need to work on that. Because that's the fear of stepping into your sole purpose. Rejection, criticism, confrontation. You're working around that. All right, now let's do a reframe on this because I want you to find the I am statements. Remember, we talk about the I am statements because that's what's going to help you during the um, week. So, and again, reminder about the event coming up on the 30th of June where we will be dealing with this all the time. This is what we're going to be working on at the event on the Reclaim Your Extraordinary Self is to find your soul purpose. You found it. Yay, Sandy. <laughs> Woohoo! I love that. I love it. You love it. Great. Fantastic. Oh, keep working on it. Okay. That's what we're going to be doing in the event. It's really passionate. I'm really passionate. This is my passion. I love it. 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 Oh, helping women find their purpose. Let's change the world, people. Oh. Yay, one woman at a time, one woman's purpose at a time. Um, okay, let's do a re reframe. Right, tap with me. Even though I've been living with this pain of rejection, I choose to be courageously authentic. Even though I know there has been rejection in my past and I know that it stopped me from living my purpose. I choose to be courageously, authentically me. Phew, how good is that? Even though I know rejection has impacted on me in the past, I now choose to be courageously, authentically me. Tap. I choose to be courageously, authentically me. I choose to release the pain of rejection. That was an old story. I choose to be courageously, authentically me. I choose to forgive all those in the past who have rejected me. I'm going to write a list of them. <laughs> Forgive them all. Forgive everybody for everything. A lot easier. I choose to be courageously, authentically me. I choose to be courageously, authentically me. Take a deep breath and let it go. All right, I want you to find the I am statements in that. Remember the power pose we talk about, okay? So, so anchor that in. I am courageously, authentically me. I choose to be me. I am worthy to be me. Find those I am statements. I am courageously, authentically me. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love the little to that. I am courageously, authentically me. And remember this week, it's a practice. 
it's a practice. It's every day. And it's one of those things that you, well, when you put it in the top of your mind, as I have done this week, um, I'm, I'm finding places where I'm not being authentically me. I'm picking it up and go, oh, that's interesting. Oh, mm, I see that. You know, I'm a people pleaser or I have been in the past a people pleaser. I want people to feel good, you know. That's part of my role. Uh, no, no, no. My role is to inspire others to be their best, to live their authentic self, to live their purpose. And if the truth has to be there, if I have to call you on it, then that's me. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. Yeah. So look at when you, you feel that confrontation coming up and you're feeling uncomfortable. Okay, what's my, what's my normal go-to here? What do I go to whenever I'm in fear of confrontation? Because you want to be able to speak the truth with compassion. You want to be able to speak the truth with authenticity. You want to be able to speak the truth from your heart. Not, you know, you have to also look at your agenda, that you're not wanting something in return. And, you know, you don't want to be validated. You, want to be, you don't want people to think you're wonderful. You don't want people to pat you on the back and blow smoke up your, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be able to speak your truth authentically with compassion and be your authentic self with compassion for others. What we're here for. All right, my lovers, we are well over time. Oh, my, 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 my. Quarter past already. We are over time. But I, I, I just love this topic. I'd love to know if this has really resonated with you this morning um, because I'm going to share this out um, quite a bit. And... Um, it's been really, for me, a real aha this week for me, and I hope for you this week as well. Let me know um, if it is because, wow, you know, it could honestly kind of change everything for you, right? All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Stay really, you know, aware this week, um, living your authentic self. Give yourself kindness and compassion. It's not going to happen every day. And we slip to we are. Um, and that's okay. And that's okay because we're on the path. We're all on the path to involvement. Oh, well, you're welcome, Melissa. Great time. And that's awesome. All right. Fantastic, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, week and weekend. Be aware, you know, aware of the signs. They'll be there for you. They'll be there. Mine's been time again this week. Oh, time everywhere. Oh nine oh, zero nine zero nine eleven eleven twelve twelve oh everywhere this week. Be aware of the signs. Ah, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Sandy. You're welcome, Michelle. Have a lovely weekend. All right, guys. We shall talk next week. Heaven knows what the topic will be. <laughs> All right, lovely Cecily. Thank you for being here. Okay, have a wonderful. Bye, everybody.